Hi everyone and welcome to the tutorial. Today we'll be demonstrating how to work the invisible ribbed bind off method. This is a really lovely and neat way to finish off a piece of one by one knitting as it will mimic the sort of patterning that your knit and purl stitches have. So it's a great way to finish off things like toe up socks, the cuff of a top down sweater. There's all sorts of applications for this technique. You can work this technique on a flat piece of knitting and in which case you would be doing the same steps that we're going to be doing here today until you reach the end. But I'm going to show you how to work it on a piece of knitting in the round. So we'll see how to neatly join the end and start of the round when we get to that point. There are quite a few steps to this technique, so let's jump right in. The first thing we're going to do to work this technique is to cut our working yarn and leave a really nice long tail that we're going to thread with our tapestry needle. As with other techniques for bind offs and cast ons where you need to have a long tail, it can be a bit of a guess exactly how much yarn you need. So just make sure you're really nice and generous so that you don't run out of yarn halfway through your bind off. We're also going to work a couple of setup steps before we get into our repeat of the bind off. So these steps are only worked once over the first couple of stitches. Just a quick note that in this technique where it refers to the first and second stitches on the needle, this is always the closest stitches on your needle, not counting what has already been bound off. So that'll make more sense as we get into it. But if it says first and second and you've already bound off a few stitches, that means what's currently on the needle, you're not going back and reworking the stitches that have been bound off until we get to the end of the round and we do a little connection technique. So the first thing we're going to do is take our tapestry needle, insert it purl wise into the first stitch on our needle and pull the yarn through, but don't slip anything from the needle yet. So it can be a little bit fiddly just with the first few stitches so that your yarn doesn't get caught around your other needle if you have another needle but that's all done there and then we're going to insert the tapestry needle between the first and second stitches on the needle so if we look at it this way it's going through those first two stitches purlwise and then you can pull the yarn through at this stage if you want or wait a moment we're going to insert knitwise into the second stitch on the tapestry needle. So through the front loop from front to back. And now you can pull the yarn all the way through both of those stitches. And just make sure you pull out any tangles you get, which can happen with a long tail of yarn. Now we're ready to begin our repeat. The first thing we do with a repeat is insert our tapestry needle into the first stitch on the needle knitwise, so through the front loop from front to back like so, and then slip this stitch from the needle and pull the yarn through it. Next, we're going to insert the needle purlwise, so from back to front through the front loop of the second stitch on the needle and pull the yarn through but don't slip anything from the needle yet. Insert the tapestry needle into the first stitch on the needle purlwise and this time we're going to slip it from the needle and pull your yarn through. And the last thing is to insert the tapestry needle purlwise between the first and second stitches on the needle. So like so, pull the yarn through if you want. And then knit wise into the second stitch. And pull the yarn through, but don't slip anything from the needle. Okay, so that's our repeat. And as you can hopefully now tell, we are binding off stitches as we do this and if we say first and second it's now whatever the next stitches on our needle are. So let's go again. Insert tapestry needle knitwise into first stitch and slip it from the needle. Pulling yarn through. 
insert tapestry needle purlwise into second stitch pull yarn through but don't slip anything from the needle yet insert tapestry needle purlwise into first stitch and slip it from the needle pulling yarn through and insert tapestry needle between the first and second stitches purlwise and then into second stitch knit wise do not slip anything from the needle so for every repeat we work we bind off two of our stitches and that's how it looks so far oh, I'm just caught on my other needle there there we go so I'm going to continue repeating those steps until I get to the end of my round and we'll meet you back there. Now that my tail end of yarn is getting shorter, it's a little bit easier to show you what's going on. And I just wanted to let you know the repeat that I say in my head as I'm doing this technique so that I don't forget where I'm up to. So that repeat is knit off, purl, Purl off, knit. So if you're at a knit off, that means insert knit wise and slip that stitch off the needle. And same thing for purl off. And if you're just saying purl or knit, that means you don't slip any stitches from the needle. Another way to help you keep track of where you're up to is that a knit off or purl off should always line up with the column of stitches underneath it. So because these V's here are my column of knit stitches and the next one is purl stitches, I know that this stitch here needs to be a knit off stitch rather than a purl off stitch. So knit off and then we do our purl. And I know I'm on track because I'm now up to a purl off and it's with that column of purl stitches, purl off, and then knit, and we're back to the start of our repeat again. Okay, so I'm now at my very last two stitches of the round. If I was working this technique flat, I could just knit off and purl off my last two stitches and that would finish them but because I'm working in the round I want to create a nice clean connection between these stitches and the stitches at the start of the round which will make it look really neat and smooth and hard to see where the start and end of the round are so to do this I'm going to repeat the exact same steps as what we've been doing but I'm going to also use these two stitches in that process so what I mean by that is that we're going to knit off this first stitch and then the next part of our process, our repeat, is to purl. And I'm going to use this first stitch of the round to do my purl. So we take the tapestry needle and we insert it purlwise into what would be the front leg of that stitch from back to front. So hopefully you can see which bit of the stitch I've picked up there and pull the tapestry needle through. Then we're up to our purl off, which is this last stitch on the needle. So insert tapestry needle purl wise and remove the needle. And the last thing we have to do to finish it is to do our knit. And I'm just going to take the other leg of that first stitch, so the other half of the V, insert my tapestry needle through it and draw the yarn through. And that's just created a nice neat and smooth finish to our bind off. So that's the invisible ribbed bind off method. The only thing I have left to do now is to weave in all my ends neatly and then my piece of knitting is completely finished. As you can see, it's resulted in a really neat 
finish that's sort of like a tubular bind off but my piece of knitting is reversible and there's no bumpy bits and it's really nice and stretchy thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video please feel free to subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions or comments do leave them below